So here we are sitting with one of the great serve and volleyers in history. What do you do when you come up against what Taylor came up against yesterday, an opponent who's passing you pretty handily? Well, Taylor came out serve and volleying, but she got passed too many times, so she adjusted and stayed back more. She won more points on her second serve than her first serve, which tells me that she thought better doing the second serve, but the first serve needs to be a little less predictable, and also her volleying needs to be less predictable. She goes cross court all the time because of her technique, and Andrescu knew that. She had the book on her. She knew she she was closing a lot, so she knew where to go with her shots. Yeah, the surprise element wasn't there for Andrescu right. that it seemed like it was in the, the prior two matches where uh, Taylor came in 106 times and 70 something times in the prior two matches, just 40 times because she recognized that she was up against someone who was ready for it. She had to make the adjustments. When you do that, you need to be a little bit smarter with your serving and recognize what you're receiving off the return to serve plus one, then attack. That, that's a, a move, but uh, listen, overall, what an amazing tournament for Taylor. Heck I mean, yeah. she, she's going right up this way Fantastic. in the rankings, but Andrescu remains one of the big favorites for this tournament. Yeah. We, we just point about Andrescu, you mentioned the Shenzhen finals, the top eight players. Right now, Andrescu will qualify to go. Keep in mind, she missed basically the entire clay court season. She has not lost a match outright since March 1st. This streak she is on is phenomenal. She has only played 12 tournaments in her life. More on